Well, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining our second uh, E-Week presentation. Uh, my name is Jonathan Brower. I'm the president of the ASE Dallas branch. And I'm here today to share my career in structural engineering with you all. So we had Alexis start us off on Monday. And uh, yeah, I hope that you all get a little insight into what I do as a, as a structural engineer. So uh, yeah, my name is Jonathan Brower. I work at a company called LA Peace Partners. Uh, so a little bit about me. I grew up in El Paso, Texas, uh, out in far west Texas. Uh, that bottom left photo is a, is a fairly recent photo of me back in the, in the mountain area behind where the neighborhood where I grew up in El Paso. And I grew up playing tennis uh, since I was a pretty small child in El Paso. So it was kind of my big extracurricular activity outside of school. Uh, and after I graduated high school, I went on to Texas A&M University and I kept playing tennis there, not on the varsity team, just on the club tennis team. And that was a lot of fun. Uh, I got to enjoy that. And uh, I got a bachelor's and master's degree in civil engineering from Texas A&M University. And while I was at A&M, I even got to uh, go study abroad for one summer. So that bottom right photo is actually from the study abroad trip that I took out to Spain. So I was in Spain for six weeks, um, took a concrete design class there and a capstone design class. And we got to go on road trips all over uh, Spain that summer. So once I graduated with my master's degree in civil engineering in May of 2012, I got a job here in Dallas at a company called LA Feast Partners. And I'll actually, I, I forgot to mention that when I was in school, I also had an internship. Uh, so that was an internship that I had while I was in grad school for one summer. And that was down at Keywit Offshore Services in Ingleside, Texas, which is really close to Corpus Christi, for those of you familiar with that area. So that bottom left photo is, is uh, from my internship that summer. That was the summer of 2011. And so that facility was a, a, a place where they fabricated and built offshore drilling rig platforms. So it was really cool to see you know, pretty large scale construction going on actively out in the fab yard. And I wasn't designing those uh, oil rigs, but I was helping the uh, contractors, the, the builders of those rigs kind of on smaller details and helping them develop their crane lifting plans so that they could pick up the items that they were fabricating. Uh, so it was more construction based, but I still was doing some structural design. Uh, but yeah, once I graduated, I got a job at LA Feast Partners here in Dallas. And so that, that photo on the right is me a couple summers ago out on a job site. And uh, it's really, uh, that was a really cool job site to be out on. Uh, it's probably my favorite project that's over in the Deep Ellum part of Dallas. And that is the Baylor Scott and White Admin Center. Uh, so I like to go out on site as much as possible whenever I have projects that are in construction because I, I love seeing my designs come to life. Uh, so a little bit, a little bit about me personally. Uh, I'm married to Lindsay, uh, so that's her on the right, and we have a almost 10-month-old son named Noah. So there he is in the middle. So he's a lot smaller in that photo. He's he's gotten a lot bigger and he's starting to crawl around now. And I really enjoy running in my free time. So I like to get up early in the morning, go for a run. Um, and I love the Dallas Stars. I split some season tickets to the Stars with some coworkers at LA Feast, and it's a lot of fun uh, watching them play. It's a bummer. Can't really go to games right now in person, uh, but hopeful for, for next season. So why did I become uh, a structural engineer? Really, I was uh, always kind of attracted to and amazed by uh, really tall buildings when I was a, when I was a small child. I loved uh, you know driving through downtowns uh, and seeing these big buildings and and wondering how they stood up and why they stood up and being kind of amazed by the people who could design those and understood why the buildings stood up. Uh, so, kind of from a very early on uh, age, I was you know interested in buildings and wanted to learn more about them. And so once it came time for me to choose a university to go to, uh, you know, I, I definitely knew I wanted to go into 
to building design. So, you know, probably in high schools when I really decided that, yeah, I, I definitely want to be building buildings for a career. Uh, and I love now that I get to uh, do the engineering design work and I get to understand how to design a column, how to design a floor system and how to put information together so that someone can then take my design and actually build it in real life. And so I think this photo for me perfectly kind of illustrates why I became a structural engineer. Uh, there's the Dallas skyline in the background. So that was kind of my initial inspiration, right? Was seeing these really tall buildings. And then in the foreground is the job site that I was working on that Baylor project. And this, this particular project was uh, a really large project and there was always so much going on. And so you can see there's just tons of workers in this small portion of the building. Uh, if you look closely, there's a, a, a pot of uh, concrete being flown in by the tower crane. So they're probably pouring one of these concrete columns. Uh, it was also really cool to see, you know, uh, all of the reinforcing that I designed while doing my calculations at, at the office, they, those were starting to lay those out. Um, <laughs> and so I really, uh, I love to see my designs come to life and I really appreciate uh, to uh, the, the chance to go out on these job sites. Uh, another thing that I really love to do is, is stuff like this, like this presentation right here, even though it has to be a, a virtual presentation, I love to uh, give back to the younger generations and and hopefully inspire uh, some students like you all to pursue a, uh, a career in engineering. And so these are some photos of of me with some uh, Woodrow Wilson students a few years back actually. So we did a Habitat for Humanity build day with some Woodrow students uh, and some Hillcrest students I believe too. And and then the photo on the right is a job site that uh, I, it was another building that I had worked on and I got to take some of the high school students out there and we got to go on a really cool tour of that building. So I really enjoy sharing my passion for, for engineering uh, with you all. And hopefully uh, in a year or so, maybe we can get back out there in person to one of these job sites. Okay, so that was kind of the intro portion. I wanted to now uh, let y'all see what I'm working on actively right now. So this is a building that uh, is being constructed right now. They're only on the foundation right now. So they're drilling the piers right now as we speak. Um, and eventually they're gonna start going vertical. And there's an office building, and then there's a parking garage. And then there's two steel canopies that I'm also going to talk about. So I'm going to stop this uh, PowerPoint. I'm actually going to show you all now our Revit model. So I think a lot of you all should be uh, learning Revit or a little bit familiar with it now uh, with your CEA class. And so it does, it is a program that gets used in real life. So this is. Uh, the Revit model for this building that I'm working on. And right now I have the architectural model turned on. So uh, you can see all of the architects uh, glazing on this building. Uh, you can see the balconies that they have. They've, they've modeled in uh, the guardrails on these balconies and there's doors out to these balconies that you can see. Um, <clears throat> this project in particular actually has a separate architect doing the interiors. So if you look closely into the building through the glass, uh, you can see there's nothing inside the building. There's no walls, there's no desks, uh, there's no furniture, there's nothing. Uh, but that's because this architect is only doing what we call the core and shell of the building. Uh, there's a separate architecture firm that has their own Revit model that I don't have loaded into this model. Uh, and they are laying out all the furniture, all of the interior partition walls, all of that stuff. Um, so we don't, do a lot of work with the interiors architect. Uh, our primary focus is the core and shell and the interiors Revit model tends to have a lot more details in it and is a lot larger. So it really bogged down this model. So this for now only has the core and shell architecture model in it. Uh, and then there's the garage over there. So this next view I'm gonna show you is a view of just the structural model. So in this particular view, I've turned off the architecture model uh, we're only looking at the concrete structure that is supporting this building. Uh, so this is like the skeleton of the building, right? And this particular job happens to be a concrete uh, pan form system. So I'm gonna kind of rotate the model and you can kind of see the underside of it. And so in this particular system of construction, 
uh, it's a series of, of joists and beams that span to, uh, to concrete columns. And the great thing about this type of floor system, if I kind of rotate it, you can see it's all one thickness. So it's a very uniform uh, floor system design. Uh, they then kind of break out, uh, certain, they, they put voids basically in the concrete so that we can create these joists that span to the girders and then those girders span to the columns. This is a pretty typical type of construction when it comes to office buildings. Uh, over here on the right, there's some uh, miscellaneous CME walls, and this is just for the service yard area. So there's gonna be some generators over here, some dumpsters, it's just kind of a, <clears throat> a mechanical area where they can kind of screen off and hide those big pieces of equipment. So that's a look at the structural Revit model that I've been working on and the design of all of these floor members, the joists and girders and columns, those are all in separate analysis programs, but we then use Revit to pull all that information together. I also want to show you all some, some cool uh, subcomponents to this project. So uh, there is, this is kind of a, a truncated 3D view. And uh, so there's the building there on the right. You can see I've kind of chopped it off in this view. And we have this canopy, the steel canopy, uh, that's actually going to span between two buildings. So this building that I showed you initially, this is actually the second phase in a, a master campus. So uh, there's the building on the right. If you were to imagine just in this white space here on the left, there's another building that's basically a mirror image of this phase two building. So they wanted to have a, a, a covered walkway basically between the two buildings. So that's what this canopy is. So this is a, an element, a structural element that is completely separate from either building. Uh, and it's made out of steel because the, the architect is going to leave all this steel exposed. So they want it to look nice. Uh, but we got to design uh, these steel columns and these steel members and apply wind loads to them and make sure that everything is stiff enough and strong enough uh, to meet the needs of uh, this building owner. That's a, a pretty cool little subcomponent to that building. And then I mentioned also earlier that there's a garage as part of this campus. So again, there's my phase two building kind of on the southern end and then to the north is this precast parking garage. And they kind of wanted the same thing. They wanted to have a covered walkway between the phase two building and the phase two garage. So now I'm gonna switch over to a 3D view of this garage canopy. And this is again, kind of a truncated uh, 3D view in the Revit model. So there's the building on the left and the garage on the right and some more uh, steel framing that we had to lay out and design in order to give this covered walkway. And I'm actually working on this right now with another uh, young engineer in our office. I was getting some help from him to, to model this in one of our analysis programs. Uh, and so these are all, uh, this particular canopy happens to be on rectangular columns and then uh, rectangular uh, HSS uh, steel members. And I think the span, it's kind of hard to, to get a feel for the scale of all of this, but I think if you were to measure the distance from column to column there, that's about 50 feet. And that's because this is actually a fire lane. So this uh, canopy is, is tall enough so that a fire truck can drive under it and then wide enough also that a uh, fire truck can drive through this area and have access to where it needs to have access to. Uh, another interesting component to this building is the roof screen wall. So this is a, a truncated view of the very top of the building. And there's a couple of elevator overruns. So this kind of darker blue area you see in the middle, that's the, the top of the building, the roof. Uh, but typically, when you have elevators, they have to have a little bit of space above them for all of the equipment and the hoist beams and the, and the safety bars. And so typically they have to have a little roof that pops up higher than the rest of the roof. Uh, but the architect doesn't want those little pop-ups to be visible from the road around the building. So they, have to, they wanted to add this screen wall to kind of screen off this area. <clears throat> uh, so this takes some special design and detailing. So in this particular case, I'll switch over now to just the structural only view. We had concrete columns in this building, like I said earlier, but we extended them up above uh, the roof so that we could put some steel members to kind of frame out this screen wall. So this is what the skeleton of that screen wall looks like. Uh, and so there's some special 
when loads that get applied to the screen wall and some special design considerations we have to take into account when we're doing all this, but it, it's kind of fun to have multiple types of uh, materials on, on one project. So I was doing a lot of concrete design, but then I still get to, to work with some steel when it comes to those canopies and the screen wall. So to give you all a picture again of the whole building, uh, again, there's, there's our core and shell structure. Uh, there's the, the roof screen wall with the big steel tubes on them. And then over on this side, uh, there's the building to building canopy. And in this view, I've, I've hidden the garage canopy, but the garage canopy would be right here on the left side. So this is a really fun project to be working on. Like I said, they're in construction right now. Uh, they're, they're drilling the piers for this main building. Uh, we're still uh, designing the garage and the garage canopy, but while, they're, while we're still designing that, they can go ahead and start constructing this main part of the building. So this is yeah, a 3D view of the Revit model, but these are all just kind of pretty pictures. They don't really tell anyone how to build this building, right? So we use the 3D Revit model though to create 2D sheet plans. So I'm gonna show you all a couple of these sheet plans. So we create level views and then from those level view sheet plans that lay out the structure for this building. So this is really where, where Revit becomes really powerful. And you know, as you learn more and more about Revit in your class, uh, you'll gain a, a greater appreciation for it. But I can you know, create grids in Revit so that I can lay out my columns. And I can start to lay out all my joists and girders uh, to span to those columns using Revit. So all of this is a 3D model. This is that same, you know, uh, almost two foot, they're over two foot thick concrete slab system that I've modeled in 3D, but this is now a, a 2D plan view. And it shows all of the, the joists in this uh, structural system, all the girders, and all of these, these kind of marks you see on plan, the G34, the G1, the J1, those are all references to a schedule that then tells the contractor how much reinforcing to put in these, uh, these concrete members so that they can then pour the concrete and uh, build the building. So this is, you know, in the end, we don't give the contractor a, Revit, a 3D Revit model. We give them uh, PDFs of sheets like this. So uh, it's kind of interesting to think that, you know, we put all this work into the 3D model just to produce 2D sheets, but this is really the best way to convey the information. And it's also, <clears throat> you know, a really uh, kind of standardized format and it's easy for the entire industry to understand what is on these sheets. And then they can then interpret all of our sections that we cut on the, around the building to build this uh, just like we designed it. So that is a quick summary of my 3D Revit model for this building. Does anyone have any questions about this? I can walk you all through anything. Hey, Jonathan, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really late. I'm popping in between me. That's okay. Stuff, but um, anyway, you, you made the comment that um, that as you clicked on something, it would take you to the schedule that would show the rebar. Mm -hmm. Can you go to that? Can you show me that? Like, yeah. Through and show me the rebar schedule. I'm just curious what that looks like. Yeah. So we'll we'll look at this. Uh, we'll look at this J one and J twelve, right? So these are these are joists that are spanning. I'll draw on this with some pink lines. So we have this skinny little six inch member that's spanning. Uh, girder to girder and, and it keeps going on and on so there's multiple marks on plan here so then if we were to go to our reinforcing schedule oh wrong page. here's our reinforcing schedule now so if i was looking back on that previous page at j1 here and i wanted to know what the reinforcing in that is i go uh over here to the schedule Let's see, okay, J1, its width is six inches. Its depth is 24 and three quarter inches. 
and then we lay out, you know, what is the the top left reinforcing look like? What does the middle uh, bottom bars look like? And then in this particular case, we tell them to make the top bars all continuous. So there's no splicing going on. Uh, but that's that's kind of a, a preview of what those, those okay, joists so schedules look like. So the, the actual member itself, the outer dimensions are six inches by 24 and three quarter. Is that yes. what I'm Yep. So that's what they would build a form for. And then they're using these two number eight bars on the top. What's that, not centered? Is that what, or no? What? Oh, that's uh, no splice. So no splice, okay. And then one number seven and one number five. Okay, I mean, so this is, this is interesting. I, I've never seen the rebar schedule on something like this. So that's pretty interesting. So if you go back, that J1 member goes from G34 to G1, and that's it? Yes, but it's a, uh, we designed it as not just a single span, it's a multiple span run. So it's continuous then with this J12 next to it. So and J12 then, would have the same rebar schedule? Uh, so we'll look now, we'll go to J12, you go down here, there it's J12 width is six inches, depth is 24 and three quarter. And then the top left reinforcing is continuous from the previous span. That's what this mm. continuous okay. continuous okay. means. But then these are different, the number yeah. six and number eight. That's yes. Different. And that's because, you know, this span is a lot longer. Right. Um, okay. Hmm. And you'll see, like, you start to see patterns in this type of system where we group similar joists together. So, <laughs> you know, all of these in this area are kind of the same span and they have the same tributary area, so they're gonna have the same mark. Yeah, okay, so this is fascinating. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, one thing that I was gonna do next is to do like that tributary area and all that, the, the beams and girders and joists, and, which I'm not very good at explaining, I'm not a structural, but um, anyway, that this is really fantastic for them to look at that and see that then you know, we just got hit with the news that all these new laptops that we were going to get got damaged and with oh, water. No. Mm. So yeah, we're not going to, I don't know what I'm going to do about Revit. I'm like devastated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is great, Jonathan. Thanks. I, I'm curious to know um, maybe on a different, from a different perspective, like who all worked on this, this modeling and was it just you? Was it a team? And you, you made mention of some analysis programs. I'd, yeah. Maybe you could unpack that just a little bit and like how they, what those are and what kind of skills are needed to engage with those and put them to use. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, yeah, this was all done by a team of engineers. It wasn't just me. Uh, mm -hmm. I was kind of the project. Uh, I'm, I'm not the engineer who sealed this building. So I have, I work on a team with, uh, six engineers and we all have a team leader and her name is Erin and so she is the one who sealed this this building and is responsible for um, ultimately responsible mm -hmm. for the design of this but I was kind of the the person underneath her put in charge of managing the younger engineers so mm -hmm. we had about uh, three engineers working under me that I was kind of helping mentor and, and teach them how to do this and uh, so I would do, a, I, I'm right now involved in a lot of the detailing. So making sure that all of these marks look good and that we have the right sections cut around the perimeter of the building and that our notes on the plan, you know, all of these extra notes that have to do with the, the little small details of this building are on there. And then the younger engineers that I was helping mentor, they're the ones doing the design of these concrete beams and, mm. and specifying exactly how much reinforcing uh, mm. needs to go in there. So they're making the beam choices with your oversight. Yes. Is that a yeah. fair, fair summary? Because okay. yeah. that's, you know, as you may well, uh, as Diane knows, in, in our spring, we point our uh, course towards the commercial realm. And that, that's a very key component of what everybody <laughs> is uh, asked to start learning how to do. So it's great to see this in a live building in a live model. <clears throat> And yeah, I loved how you went from the 3D to the 2D. Um, that, I think that's a, something worth emphasizing. Yeah. And, and the analysis programs you, mm -hmm. you had met, mentioned, those are, I guess, are some other software packages yeah. that do some analysis of loading design. Yeah. 
is it, or yeah maybe so i'll show you this that. this is a good example of it so this is yeah that roof screen wall so uh we have these steel tubes that are taking a, a lot of wind load because they're really high in the air mm. and mm. uh they have these solid screens all around them here in the, in the mm. architectural view so yeah revit can't do the structural analysis to tell us mm. how big these steel members need to be so mm -hmm. i'll pull this over now this is our this is a program called risa uh don't mm. ask me what R-I-S-A stands for, but it's called, <laughs> it's called RISA, uh, okay. RISA 3D. And so you can tell this looks pretty similar, right, to that image I just showed you in Revit. So I've, I've mm -hmm. created this separate model in RISA. And I'll turn on there. You can kind of graphically see now the members mm -hmm. that I've modeled in here. And I'll mm -hmm. start to turn on the loads now. So <clears throat> now you can see these steel members and you see these these line loads now that are popping up, these blue, or sorry, purple mm -hmm. numbers and, and uh, like forces that are being applied. Mm -hmm. And so I had to do some calcs by hand. I have, I have like an envelope, or sorry, not envelope, a, uh, a folder of calcs I did by hand. And mm -hmm. I, I figure out exactly what the wind pressure is going to be up there based on the, the design code. And then I apply those, uh, those pressures to my structure. And uh, so there's there's wind in both directions, right? There's the uh, mm. this is north south wind, east west wind, and then uh, I had to also account for the weight of all of that cladding, the screen wall around here. Yeah. So that's what all this loading is doing. And then I can uh, create load combinations and basically run a design of this structure. And I will turn on my Unity check. So there's nothing as red. So in general, right, the international sign of bad is red. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't have any red. So that means at least uh, strength-wise, all of my members are working right now. Uh, mm. And uh, then that's good. that's going to point to materials choices for the for the, uh, the actual wall systems, I guess. Yeah. So then I can go in here and uh, I can actually, you know, pull mm. up the uh, shear and moment diagrams and mm. deflection diagrams. Uh, for each of these members individually, if I want to look at them, kind of more in oh, depth. That's cool. Brilliant. Yeah. And I think I can even, I think this will show. Oh, I can't get it to show right now. The, it's trying to get the deflected shape to show, but. Uh, yeah, I can't get it. Oh, that's great. Oh, I know. Let me do one. one sh I can show. This is kind of cool to see it uh, moving. There we go. Ah, so you under can, load. You can see, yeah, like the the gray lines or what it what it was just perfectly on its own with no load applied to it, and then mm. that's how it's all kind of moving and deflecting. Wow. Uh, under max load or this is a load or this was load? yeah this was under wind load. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think you can wow. even uh, can animate it. Oh, okay. wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> That's a little un. un, un <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't you want to be on the roof when that's going on? Yeah. <laughs> well, this is this is also uh, magnified, so it's magnified forty uh, times. Well, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but if you showed them like a high rise and to see how it would sway in the wind, I bet mm -hmm. that's like, man, it looks like Jello. I bet. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's super cool. Yeah. So that's what is this? This is a roof. So is it the? The odd configuration is because of the slope of the roof or drainage. Is that um, this in particular? Uh, it's kind of this weird trapezoidal. Oh, shape. that's the way it looks anyway. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I didn't and catch that. Right. <clears throat> they were trying to cover cover something up on the roof, I guess. Is right. Is the air handler or something? Is this is the. Um, there are yeah. There's some mechanical units over in this area, and then there's the elevator overruns here. Ah. So. That's why the screen wall is higher over here because you have to turn to hide those because uh, in this particular building, yeah, this would be like, there's a major road here to the south. So if you're looking at it, you know, from this direction, they're trying to hide. Okay. Those, uh, yeah. Wow. How what, deep are your piers? Uh, these piers are, I think rock was about 20 feet down, 20 to 25 feet down. And then we have, anywhere from five to 10 feet of penetration. So, okay. Uh, okay. Into the rock. 
What what part of town is this again? I don't remember. This is in uh, this is in McKinney actually. This is right mm. off of Highway 121 in McKinney. Oh, okay. And there's Phase One in place already. Like we can yes. go find some pictures of yeah, where, actually, where this is situated. You could. Go. That was the other question I had. Is yeah, what does Phase One look like? It'd be great to compare the two and say, hey, this is what's coming. So it's actually on so our company website. Oh, excellent. So. Uh, yeah, this is the, the one that's already complete and in place. Mm. So there's phase one, and then just to the right of this photo on the on the far left, just to the right of that would be where this new building is going. Oh. So this wow. is all curtain wall. So you have the curtain wall drawings too, or? Uh, those are yeah, those are done by another engineer, but we do get those and review them. Oh. But typically, by the time it gets to me, it's already complete, and I'm just kind of verifying that they're. That they're attaching to my structure where I thought they were going to attach to. Um, well, yeah, that's good to know. <laughs> but yeah, we do get to look at those too. Cool. All right. Wow, that's fantastic. So, um, so then this is recorded, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to share this. We can do that forever and whenever and wherever now. It's 